thank you so much for coming. Um, I appreciate it. I'm very, very excited to talk to you folks about reverse mortgages. This is a wonderful, wonderful government insurance program that very few people know about. If everybody were to come in here and listen and knew what was available to them, this room would be packed. Uh, you literally couldn't get in here. It's very sad that people don't know about this, and that's why I do educational seminars all over Chicagoland. I do two or three a week to educate people to see what it is that, that they could possibly be getting. Um, so this is a great, great program for seniors. Like I said, it's run by HUD. It's government insured. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about me so you know who I am. My name is Terry Bendit. I've been a mortgage broker in Chicagoland over 20 years. I work all of Chicagoland. I do all of the adult communities. All I do is reverse mortgages, which allows me to know all of the programs and laws and regulations that are really, really important for folks to know. This is a very, very important decision. It's something you do pretty much once in your life. You can change your life. So it's very important that you learn the ramifications, the myths, the truths, the realities, and that's why I'm here doing this, okay? Um, again, all I do is reverse mortgages. I'm a broker. I'm not representing any one bank, or banks don't really do them anymore. I'm not representing a lender. I have all of the lenders available to me looking for the best programs. So let's just talk about what a reverse is, what a reverse mortgage isn't. Does anybody know anything about reverse mortgages at all? Just they give you money and then you don't pay back till you have to sell your house? Uh, okay, sort of. <laughs> All right, let me go through what, what it is and what it isn't. A reverse mortgage is exactly as it sounds. It's the opposite of a mortgage. Most of us know what a mortgage is. That you pay, 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 pay interest. Uh, very little principal at the beginning. And the reason people, why do people pay off a mortgage? Why do you not want a mortgage on your property? So you don't have the payment. You won't have the monthly payment. Why else? Save interest. Why else? And it's yours. It's <laughs> yours. You don't have to move. Well, I'll tell you what happened. In the 1980s, the Ronald Reagan administration came up with this concept of reverse mortgages. Okay? Uh, just like it sounds. You don't pay it, it pays you. Okay? It's a reverse. They came up with this program for seniors. Seniors are on fixed incomes. Seniors need additional money. Where are you going to get additional money if you're not working? You're on a fixed income. What's fixed? Nothing. Gasoline isn't fixed. Taxes aren't fixed. Nothing. Healthcare isn't fixed. So what are you supposed to do? If you're here and everything keeps rising, what do you do? So the Reagan administration came up with this program that's run by HUD. It's insured by the government. Okay, It's run by HUD Housing Urban Development. Ben Carson's the head of it. Um, and at an FHA. They came up with a program that allows seniors, your largest asset is usually what? Your home, correct? But you can't cut out a brick and, and take out up $200. You can't, you can't take off the roof and have $10,000. So what do you do? If this is your asset, you can't touch it. I look at it like, like a big glass case filled with money <clears throat> And every day you're walking by, and, oh, if I had $5,000 more, if I had $5,000 more, I could do this, I could do that, I need $25,000 for this. And you're walking by this money. Well, reverse mortgages allow you to take out that money, okay, and still do all the things that you wanted to do, which was stay in your house, not make monthly payments, okay? Be guaranteed to always keep the title to your home. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about there's a lot of questions about what it is, what it isn't, um, and that kind of thing. So let's just look about today's reverse mortgage. And I say today's reverse mortgage because the government has really, really changed a lot of the um, guidelines for it to make it better for seniors, okay? So they've really changed it over the years. They've uh, fine-tuned it. So today's reverse mortgage might be worth considering if you're committed to staying in your home either because you don't want to leave or because other housing alternatives are unappealing or affordable. <clears throat> you want to enhance your lifestyle and enjoy your golden years and do all the things you have dreamed of or to purchase a more desirable house. Number four, you want a cushion for major expenses such as medical bills, 
for a serious and long-term condition or for major home repairs. Number four, you have a regular need for additional tax-free income, that's very important, tax-free, to live on and your home is an asset. Number five, you wish to delay Social Security benefits or not to deplete savings or financial investments, especially in downturn markets like right now that's going on in the market. Number six, you want the peace of mind to know that your financial needs are taken care of. Do any of these things apply to anybody here? Sure. They all apply to me. Every one of them. Every one of them. Okay? You're no different than anybody else if they apply to you. If not, God bless you. But most people are like this. Okay, you want to stay in your home. Who wants to pack up all of their dishes, all of their linens, all of their things and have to move because they can't afford their taxes, they can't afford the upkeep, they can't afford whatever, okay? That's a very scary thing. I've been saying for 25 years, I should move. <laughs> so I doubt I'm going to move. But uh, it, you don't want to move. And where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? You're going to have to pay just as much money, okay? Um, you want to enhance your lifestyle. This is not just for people who are dead, broke, poor. I mean, I'm doing a loan on a guy right now. He's got 1.6 million liquid. He just says he's got all this equity in his house, and it's not doing him any good. So he's pulling it out now, buying stocks real low because the market's low, and he's investing it. So I've done them for people that have $5 million worth of stuff. It's not just because you're dead broke, okay? There may be things you want to do. Maybe there's uh, you want to take some cruises, or you want to go on a, a, a trip, or visit family or relatives. Maybe you want to upgrade your kitchen. Maybe you want to help um, the education for your um, grandchildren. Maybe that you want to get your teeth done. I don't know. There's millions of things that you want to do that you don't maybe have the money for because you're on a fixed income. Okay, you want to enhance your lifestyle. Um, Number three, you want a cushion for major expenses such as medical bills. This is huge. This is one that's hitting my family right now. Um, as we know, things are out of sight with medical expenses right now. Do you know what the average person, average senior pays out of pocket um, in addition to Medicare, the average over their lifetime? It's about 120000 in addition to Medicare. Okay? So that's kind of scary. My brother is at going to MD Anderson. Very expensive. Just rent an apartment. There's three thousand a month, um, which is not covered, obviously. Uh, cancer drugs are very expensive. My uh, stepmother was in a. Uh, she was very ill. She uh, needed round-the-clock care, and my father passed, and, they, and he never took out a reverse mortgage. And we didn't know what to do, my brother and I. So we put her in a nursing home. Okay, we put her in a nursing home, which we thought was a nice nursing home. Let me ask you this. Do you know how much a nursing home, the average nursing home is in, in uh, Illinois? 7,000 a, oh, a month, I was going to say. 7,000 a month or so. Or eight. Yeah. About 120,000 a year. That's an average one. That's not Well, that's great. only for the world. Yeah, that's not <laughs> great. And it's, going, uh, and it's going up. And let me tell you something. Those are horrible. We went there and they drugged her at night. You know, they drug people to keep them quiet. They don't want them screaming and yelling at night. Uh, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, she didn't have lunch. Yet, uh, her jewelry got stolen. We pulled her out in one week. It was horrible. And who could afford 120000 a year? Okay? So, so we pulled her out of there. We got around the clock here and it cost a fortune. A fortune. So um, this is an alternative. This should not be the only financial tool that you have. You should have other things as well. Hopefully you have long-term care. Hopefully you have a pension. Hopefully you have Social Security. You have things like that, OK? Um, you have investments. This is just another arrow to put in your quiver. It's just something to consider. It's available to you, OK? Um, very important. Medical bills are major home repairs. This winter, my air conditioning furnace went out, eighty-six hundred dollars. What are you gonna do? Not get it? <laughs> Fifty below. Of course, you have to get it. I went out to my car after one of these expos, not this one, um, and uh, the, my uh, rear uh, window of my car was locked down. Went in there, was about twenty-five hundred dollars with the motor, with the this, with the that, with the other thing. Things happen like this. You know you get a $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 bill like crazy. We know that the longer we live, the more there's going to be expenses. That's a fact. 
That's a fact. Now there's two areas to a person's life, two divisions. The first one is the acquisition phase, where you're working, you're building up your money, you're saving, you're investing, you're acquiring money, okay? When you retire, what happens? Then you go into the distribution phase, where you start taking the money that hopefully you've built up. And hopefully there's a lot in there, because <clears throat> There may not be. So what is a person to do? That's why HUD came up with this concept of allowing people to stay in their homes and still get the money they need to live. Because you're going to need bills. You're going to have money. And I keep saying to people, what are your options? If you need to write a check for 20 grand, where are you going to get it? Who's going to give it to you? Where are you going to get it? A lot of people are working at Walmart, a lot of seniors. And a lot of times it's, you know, it's greeters or whatever. I don't know if they have them anymore, but they're not doing it by choice. I did a reverse mortgage on a lady who um, was, she must have been like four foot nothing. She weighed about 80 pounds. She's walking dogs for $5. And she's walking dogs at 10 o'clock at night when it was 50 below. Got her about $100,000 out and her life has changed. This actually can save people's lives by getting them the proper medical care they need, the proper um, aid they need. So it's a, just a great alternative to consider, okay? Um, you have a regular need for additional tax-free money. This is really important. The money that you receive is <coughs> tax-free. You don't have to report it to IRS. It's not like you're working and earning income, okay? These are proceeds that are tax-free, already paid with taxable dollars. You don't have to do this again. Do you have any questions so far? Yeah. Talking very fast. No? Everybody understand? If you have questions? So far. Yeah. Okay, good. Stop me if you don't. All right, so what are the parameters to get this thing? Number one, you have to be 62 years old. So that leaves everybody out in this room. <laughs> No, you have to be 62 years old or older, okay? You can be married to someone who is younger, God bless you, but one of the, one of the borrowers must be 62 years old or older, okay? I actually did one on one lady a couple weeks ago, it was 100, 100 years old, 100 years old. But anyways, um, you have to be 62. It has to be your primary residence. That means that you have to physically live there. That doesn't mean you can't have a summer place or it doesn't mean you can't have a winter place in Florida, but mostly that's your primary residence. You live there most of the year, okay? That doesn't mean you can't leave, but that's your main home, okay? Um, you must have at least, at least 50% equity in the home. That means if you have a mortgage, that it's less than 50% of the value of the home, and I can look that up for you. I, I, I can do that. I can find out pretty much. I'm pretty good at that, knowing what the value is. 50% that you owe or less. Now, um, if you have a mortgage, let's say you have a mortgage for $20,000, your house is worth $100,000, the first thing that happens is that mortgage gets paid off. Okay? And as we discussed, why do you pay off a mortgage? So that you can stay in your house. For the rest of your life, you don't lose your title, you um, don't have to move, you don't have to keep making monthly payments, so that's important. So that mortgage gets paid off first. That's the first thing. Any additional funds that are there would be available to you, and I'll tell you in a minute how that is, okay? You understand? So that's a misnomer that people say you have to have your house free and clear to get a reverse mortgage. That's not true, okay? There's a lot of myths in there, and if you look at your sheets, there's some myths on there and uh, we'll go through those. You will never, ever, ever, ever lose title to your home. You will never, ever, ever, ever have to leave if you do the following. You must be current and pay your property taxes. No question about it. Even if you don't have anything right now, don't you have to do that? Yes. You have to pay your homeowner's insurance policy. Smart thing to do. What happens if there's a fire, you're gonna lose it all. You have to have your homeowner's insurance policy. You have to live in there most of the year, obviously, and keep it in livable conditions. If you do those things, which you have to do anyways, irrespective of this, you're 100% guaranteed 
buy HUD, you will never lose the title to your home. You will never lose your home. People say things like, well, I heard somebody, it's bad, it's a scam, it's this, it's that. I know somebody who lost their home. Well, number one, I say, was it a government insured program? What? <clears throat> Did they pay their taxes? I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know, these are things, so, you, so does that mean you should miss out because somebody said it's bad? Because of some information that's not true? People told you Social Security was bad or Medicare was bad, would you not get it? That's why I appreciate you folks listening to this and learning about it, and that's why I'm so passionate about telling people, because this is a game changer for people's lives. It really is. I could tell you hundreds of stories of people that I've helped that have needed so much stuff you can't imagine. Okay, so you're guaranteed to stay in your home. Does that mean you have to stay in your home? No, if in a year or whatever you wanna sell, go ahead and sell. Um, I did a reverse mortgage on a lady who was up in Grace Lake. She was in an adult community in a Caroline. She had a reverse mortgage. She sold her home with the proceeds she got from the sale of the home. She went and bought another one in the Caroline in Plainfields and um, put a reverse on that. So you can do that. You can Did do you have to pay off the other one first, though? Yes, oh. yes. And with the proceeds after what was due, she took the money, bought another one, and then she put a reverse on that. So you're not bound to it, okay? There's no prepayment penalty. If you want to pay it off, you can. Nobody does, why would you? Let me, let me then talk to you a little bit about um, how it works, okay? Okay, this sounds great. How, does, how do you get paid, right? <laughs> it's not the big thing, how do you get the money? Okay, so if you, like for example, if you were to call me and I gave you the exact numbers of what it would be, pretty close, you say, oh, that sounds great. Okay, so then what happens? I come out to your home. Um, it's nice to have somebody come out to your home as opposed to just calling an 800 number. Um, I come out to your home um, and I'll go through the paperwork with you. I'll, and then what HUD requires, just so you don't take the, the, the uh, person sitting in front of you's um, word for anything, because it's a very important decision you're making, HUD requires that you speak to a HUD counselor before you can close the loan. It requires it. And that's done over the phone, it can be done over the phone, it takes about an hour, okay? So that's a, another layer of security for you. You can ask any questions you want, whatever. <coughs> The whole point is for seniors not to get scammed, not to be bamboozled, not to be coerced, that they understand. It's very important you understand. And that's why I do these seminars, because a lot of people have done things that they didn't understand, and I'm trying to get people to understand what things really are, okay, the reality of it, and give them an opportunity here to ask me questions or, or whatever, okay? So, and then there's an appraisal that's done on your property an FHA appraisal to see what the value of the home is, okay? And then the loan closes. Okay, so let me tell you, how do you get the money? How does this work? Okay, the beauty of it is it can be customized however you want. There's several <coughs> ways. <clears throat> you can either have a uh, monthly payment, like Social Security direct deposit it into your account every month. You can also, get a, a line of credit, and it's different than a home equity line of credit, and I'll go into detail on that, different than a home equity line of credit. This line of credit grows, okay, and I'm gonna explain that to you. Oh, my God, thank you. <laughs> thank you, I'm a senior, I need water. <laughs> I'm on Medicare too, my dear. <laughs> thank you. Um, you can get a line of credit, Okay, or you can get a lump sum. Now, what's beautiful is you can get a lump sum and a line of credit. You get a monthly and a line of credit. You can get just the credit line. You can get just the monthly. You can get a lump sum. So it depends what you personally want, okay? And it can always be changed. You're not locked in for life on anything, okay? Uh, most people tend to take the, the lump sum and the line of credit. And I'm going to explain how a line of credit grows. It's a fabulous fabulous um, benefit of this, of the reverse mortgage. <clears throat> okay, so you decide you want this, you pay off your mortgage or not, if you don't have one, you get the cash. 
So then how does it work? How does it work after that? Um, uh, basically, what happens is that um, you take out the reverse mortgage, you, have, you don't have any monthly payments whatsoever. Not like a mortgage that you pay every month. And that's kind of scary for senior because a lot of seniors don't open their mail or they're in rehab and a few months go by and they miss their payments. That's even on a home equity line of credit that can happen. So you don't want that, okay? You don't have to make any payments, all right? Um, so how does this get paid back and what happens, okay? So if you are married, your spouse gets to stay there for their, li their life, whichever, whoever's remaining stays there under the same um, guidelines, the same situation. They don't have to move, okay? That's what if they're important. under 62? Does it matter their age? Um, it doesn't matter well, if they're a borrower. We can work all that out. This real specific things, wills and that kind of thing, but yes, okay, obviously. Um, but um, what happens is, um, okay, when the last surviving borrower dies, when the last surviving borrower dies, um, the uh, property, the, your, your heirs have time to sell the home, okay, should they choose to, or they can buy the home for what's owed, but most don't because they have their own homes. But they have up to a year or whatever to sell the property. So say they sell the property, Say you owe 100,000, the property is 250, then they would pocket 150,000, okay? What happens if, like, for example, in 2008, 2008, when the property's got cut in half, what if you owe 100 and your property goes down to 50? This is the beauty of why it's insured. The government eats the difference. Oh. No deficiency judgment to you, to your heirs. It's called a non-recourse loan. A non-recourse loan means the house pays for itself. No person pays for it. That's really important. Okay? That's an important point. Um, because properties can go down in value. Let's be honest about it. You know, and that's what happened in 2006, 7, and 8 when properties went down in value. People couldn't afford to, didn't have enough equity to get reverse mortgages. But now while well, property values are up, it's a different story. It's a good time to do it. Any questions so far on that? No? Yeah, yeah. On this home that you just, you know, two hundred fifty thousand mm dollars, -hmm. and the people borrowed a hundred thousand and passed away, and you paid that hundred thousand dollars back. How much interest is on that? Okay, I'm going to talk about that too. Good question. Is there interest on it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is why the big banks don't do them anymore, I don't think. Because they don't want to wait 20 years for their money, number one. Or 30 years for their money. The interest, actually, it, it can go up, it can go down. It's actually going down, 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 down right now. Uh, it's in the fours at this point, 4.9, 4.7 right now, roughly. Um, now, there's interest on it. But it's not like in a forward mortgage where you're, it's very important what the interest rate is because on a forward mortgage, you're paying that every month. On a reverse, you're not paying it. You're going to be dead. Okay? It's going to be dead. If you need $50,000, you need $50,000. Where are you going to get it? You see what I'm saying? One lady I was talking to said she didn't care if it's $100,000. She needs the money right now for whatever. And she's going to be dead. She's not paying it back. Remember, the house pays it back. It's a non-recourse loan. Now, I'm going to show you something that's really great in a minute about the credit line. The credit line is going up at the same rate. And your home is also going up, hopefully. Okay? But like people said, you know, if I need the money right now, where am I going to get it? Where am I going to get it? Of course, there's interest on it. No one would lend you the money. The banks don't do them anymore, the big banks. They just don't do it. I think it's, I don't know why for sure. I think part of it is they don't want to wait for their money. It was such a small part of their business. They have to come out and educate people like I do and sit with you for hours in your homes to go over everything, make sure you understand it. They just, it's not worth it to them. So there are not a lot of lenders out there that do it. That's why I'm looking for the best lenders for you because these programs are always changing, okay? They're changing for the better, actually. So, all right, so. 
that's what would happen then if that's what would happen to, to quote unquote payback. Um, I'm going to show you something here. Are we going to talk more about that? I don't understand what you're saying about the interest. There's interest on the money that right. you take. Right. That's building up. Right. But you're not paying it. The house will pay it after yeah. you're dead. Okay, so did we talk then about like you're saying if let's say your more it was a hundred thousand but the house is only fifty thousand the does the family have to pay the interest part of it? Or just okay. That no person writes a check. Okay. If you owe a hundred, a hundred and fifty, three hundred, whatever it's grown to, okay. and your house is fifty, the government eats it. Do you know how much the government has eaten? Fourteen billion dollars. So they just charge interest to hopefully get back some. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Okay. okay. Well, hopefully. The interest comes at the sale of the house, correct? That's so, correct. So if you, you borrow 50, it's going to be plus whatever the interest was of that 50. So you're not going to really walk home with 150. It's you're needing the money. Okay. You need the money today to pay off that mortgage or you're paying a ton of interest on it. Or to get 50,000, 100,000, whatever it is, from your needs today, where are you going to get it? Where are you going to get it? No, they I understand. Just, you see what I'm saying? Right. So, so, but I'm going to show you something else that's going to bring it even a little bit clearer, okay? okay. So just bear with me here a minute. And, but keep asking these great questions. Why don't you just get a home equity line of credit? Why not? If you want a home equity line of credit, I just had a bank come over to me and talk to me because they have someone in deep trouble and they need to get them out of the home equity line of credit and they can't do it, the bank. The big banks call me all the time to get people out of home equity lines of credit. I'm going to tell you, if you want to do a home equity line of credit, I can get you one. I've gotten hundreds of them. In my opinion, they are basically for people in their 30s and 40s and 50s that have the time and the ability to make more money. Because as you know, a home equity line of credit is a balloon payment. You know that, right? If you borrow $50,000 on a home equity line of credit in seven or ten years, most of them are seven or ten years, you have to pay $50,000 back. It's due. Boom. Due. September 10th. $50,000 is due. You've had the seven years. Plus all the years of interest you paid. Okay? Banks call me. Just did one on a lady. She was in her late 70s. She was making $1,200 a month Social Security payments. She owed $55,000. The bank said it's due in two months. She can't pay it back. We can't do anything for her. She doesn't make enough income. We don't want to kick her out of her house. I also get trustees calling me on that. Bank trustees, same thing. They have these home equity lines of credit. I want to tell you this is the honest truth. I just did a reverse mortgage on a lady. Her son called me. He is a mortgage foreclosure Cook County judge. And he said she's got a $100,000 home equity line of credit due in the middle of September, and we got to get her out of this thing. This is a judge. And we sat there with the judge, his, the son, and we went through all of this. So, and trust me, it took hours because he's reading every line, which is good, which is good. But a home equity line of credit, you have to realize is a balloon. You have to realize you have to make monthly payments on that thing. I'm going to show you the differences and the similarities here. Just, yes, sir. I'm confused by the semantics, I think. To me, a home equity line of credit means I have the ability to borrow against the equity of my home. Yes. I haven't yet borrowed. That, that's a home equity loan. Home equity line of credit. Home equity line of credit means I have the ability. It means it's something, it's a product, it's an actual product. You go to a bank and you do a home equity line of credit. Right. I have a home equity credit. I, I owe nothing. Okay, that's fine. Because I haven't exercised it. Okay, that's fine. I haven't exercised the right. equity loan. I understand. Okay, so you took out one, but you didn't take any money back. If you take some money out of that home equity line of credit, you're going to have to make monthly payments. Right. Then it becomes a home equity loan. Correct. Okay, I'm going to show you the differences and similarities because you get a credit line with a reverse mortgage. Can everybody see? No, it's too small. <laughs> That's right. You're going to have to move forward from the back. I'll listen. I'll listen. Yeah, I'll listen. Move forward. Also, I have handouts. Move, sit up here. Move up. Okay, I'll home equity account. conversion mortgage. That's a reverse mortgage line of credit. Line of credit. Different than the credit line. Line of credit. 
home equity line of credit, this is Sharon I'm speaking about, that you go to a bank, you get a home equity line of credit. Let's look at the similarities. Do you keep the title and own your home? Yes and both. Is money available for immediate use? Yes and both. Are you responsible for taxes, insurance, and home maintenance? Yes, on both. So let's look at the differences. Are there required monthly loan payments? No, on the reverse line of credit. Yes, on the home equity line of credit. <coughs> How money can be received? We talked about this. You can have a credit line, a lump sum, a steady stream of monthly payments, or a combination. You pick. On the home equity line of credit, it's a credit line only. One thing, one product. Future credit line availability. Guaranteed by HUD to increase over time, <coughs> irrespective of the value of your home. This will grow. The home equity line of credit can be cut or suspended by the lender if your credit rating goes down, if the bank goes out of business, if it's Tuesday. Whatever they want to do is called a do on close. Do on clause, they can close it. Okay? This grows. Your credit line grows more available to you. And I'm going to show you that on the graph in a minute. Okay? Loan balance increases. There's and there's interest on it. It's going to grow, okay? But again, you're not making the payments. You're going to be long gone. Your home's going up in value. If you need the money, you need the money. This decreases as you pay the interest and the balloon, okay? Foreclosure risk due to non-payment limited to tax and insurance defaults and property maintenance. Remember we said that, you gotta pay your taxes, gotta pay your insurance, gotta keep the property good. This one defaults on monthly payments as well as tax and insurance. What happens if you miss two or three payments on a home equity line of credit? You're sick, you're in a rehab, you don't open your mail, what happens? You get the letter. Dear Mr. Smith, you are defaulting on your home equity line of credit. You must bring it current immediately within 30 days or our foreclosure will start, you know, that kind of deal. That never happens here because you don't make any payments on a, on a, a reverse line of credit. Can heirs be required to pay more than the home is worth? No. Remember we said that? If you owe 100 and the property goes down to 50, they don't have to make up the difference. On the home equity line of credit, yes. If you owe $100,000 and your property goes down to 50, your estate must make up the difference on a home equity line of credit, not on a reverse line of credit. You see the difference? Follow me? Okay, lifetime rate cap. I put it at 5% above the initial rate. So, if, so for example, right now it's 5%, roughly 4.9, 4.5. There's gonna be a cap on that of 5%. That's if all the world falls apart, <laughs> nuclear war, the banks close, that's the top. This one can go up to 18 to 24%. And I'm telling you, I did a, rever a reverse seminar in, in Del Webb, and a gentleman raised his hand, and he said, mine just went to 24%. What? Promise you, that's a fact. And I got him out of that. I got him out of it. It can go up. There's not a cap on that thing. Usually not at all. Okay? So, here's the question. Why would you, why, what's the purpose of taking a home equity line of credit over a home um, a reverse mortgage line of credit? The banks just talked to me. One of the banks here is a vendor. They got somebody in there, she's got a home equity line of credit, she's got to pay this money in two months, they don't know what they're going to do. I said, have her call me, I'll get her out of it. Okay, yes ma'am? Next question, you didn't talk too much about maintenance. What you know, it says you have to maintain the home. How is that? It needs to be Section 8 level. And you have the roof's not falling down. Do they come in and it's no. So, what happens if it's in really bad shape when the person dies? And well, then, then it'll sell for less. And then HUD eats it again? Oh, okay. It's never been a home inspection that I know. But they want it to be, you know, livable. I mean, I've seen horror stories. I've gone to the South Side where I've said to the people, I said to this one lady, how's the, uh, the condition of your house? She says, oh, it's good. I went there, I promise you, that the, the ceiling was hanging down almost on her head. I mean, you could see the rafters. 
And it's like, you know, we can't help you unless you fix this beforehand. One gentleman said, I have rats running through here, so we can't help you. So any questions on this? I'm just showing you, again, this is for you to decide to have the information so you know. Um, Ma'am. All right, so today your house is worth 2000 and they give you a lump sum of, I'm about 2000 200000 Okay, 200000 <laughs> And in your 10 years, a home is worth more. Can you get more again? Yes, you can refinance it. Okay. Does that cost you anything to refinance? It, okay, I, well, I'm going to talk sorry. about the cost oh. in a minute. There's really nothing really out of our pocket, but we're going to talk about how little it really is. Okay, this is the. I want to show you how our reverse mortgage line of credit grows. Okay, for example, let's look at this. We're going to look at the blue guy. This is just a real. Remember, I told you it's going to grow at the same percentage rate as the interest. Okay. Um, the blue guy, these are just estimates here, of course. These are just numbers. These are not exact numbers, but it just gives you an idea here. The blue guy, home value is 500000 So it's free and clear. Borrower takes a 750 monthly payment for as long as he or she has the loan. He also establishes a line of credit at age 62. Remember, you can do two things. You can take the money and have a line of credit. That's what he wants to do. Starting at $104,219. For illustration purposes, he does not take anything out of the line of credit, and the growth rate is 5.38% per year. The line of credit is not affected by the monthly payment. Okay, this guy's got a $500,000 home. He's taking $750 a month. That's what he wants. What's left over is $104,000 in the line of credit. That thing has grown at age 75 to 220,967. At age 85, 377,000. Age 95, 646,000. Irrespective of the value of his home, more money for him to be able to borrow. If you take a home equity line of credit, you, that's it, 50 grand, 75 grand, whatever. It doesn't grow. This is more money available for you. And what is that called? It's a line of credit with reverse mortgage. Now let's look at the red guy. The red guy. <clears throat> I've been talking all day to everybody in the booth. Home value is five hundred thousand on free and clear. Borrower takes no monthly payment and put, takes all of the available proceeds into a line of credit. For illustration purposes, he does not take anything out of the line of credit, and the growth rate is five point three eight percent per year. Okay, he just says, Terry, I want to just, or Bill or Mary or whoever, I just want to set up a line of credit. That's it. Just set up a line of credit. It starts at age 62, he's not taking anything out. 250, age 75, 530, age 85, 908, age 95, 1.5. It could be worth more than your home. He could take money out at any time. He could take all of it, none of it, some of it. Now, the interest that's accrued is only based on the money you actually take. If he takes nothing, there's no interest. You see what I'm saying? So you set it up and it's like a savings. I, yeah, in a sense it is. I don't look at it as, you shouldn't look at it as an investment, but there's more available for you to borrow. Okay? Um, there is nothing else in the world that I know of that grows without you putting money into it. An annuity that gives you money, you had to give them 100000 200000 whatever, to get money back. Stocks, you have to physically buy them. This is wonderful in the sense that you don't have to put the money in. Now, are there fees? Let's talk about fees. Yes, there's fees. Of course there's fees. Of course. What's out of your pocket? I'll tell you what's out of your pocket. $125 for uh, counseling, $550 for uh, appraisal. That's what's out of your pocket. If you can't do those things, talk to me. I work things out with people. Okay, so that's it, $675. Out of your pocket, boom. Not like a mortgage, you gotta come in with $5,000, $10,000. Are there fees? Yes, there's title insurance. You want title insurance, hello. There's flood certifications, you want that. It's gonna be a credit report. There's a recording fees, okay? Um, but you're not bringing money to the table for that. You understand? It's already figured into the loan. It's financed through the reverse. You follow what I'm saying? 
But you have to pay those first ones, the 125 and the The 125 and the 550. Okay. If you can't, let me know. Yeah. Um, just roll it into it. But that's it. Okay? So when the numbers are figured for you, what you're available to get, that's already taken all of those fees out. The, the most quote unquote largest fee in there, which you're not bringing money to, remember, is the mortgage insurance premium for FHA. And that's the one that's the beauty. Because that FHA, that FHA um, mortgage insurance premium guarantees this growth for you. It guarantees the growth. It guarantees that it's not having to be paid back by your estate with any deficiencies. The deficiencies don't have to be paid back. Okay? So that's a great thing. And it's nothing that you physically bring. Is this for everybody? No. It's not. It may be for you. It may not be for you. It's something to consider that's available to you as a senior that enables you to live your life com more comfortably, that enables you to, to uh, uh, have enough money for um, medical needs, for home improvements, to get teeth. I just, my tooth, I just got an uh, uh, implant in my tooth, $5,500, not covered by insurance, by the way. And then, of course, you've got to get that put in. This other crown price, another 1600 I mean, where do you get the money? This is crazy. You know, it's, things happen. Things happen all the time. So this is I, the reason I'm doing this presentation is it's something for you to consider. Look into it. <clears throat> I've got. Um, if you go to my website, you see that I've got a video on there. I go through it again. I've got about a nine-minute shortened version of this. Lots of information on there. Um, so that's it, basically. Um, if you have any questions, want to know exactly how much money you can get, that kind of thing, I'm, I'm available to do that for you. Do you have um, cards? I, yeah, I, I have cards here. I'll give you a magnet for your <laughs> um, But But what I'm saying is um, this is a wonderful government-insured product for seniors, designed for seniors, only for seniors, only seniors qualify, only seniors with certain um, equity amounts qualify. So if you do, it's something to consider, you know, um, it doesn't hurt to be educated and that's why I come out and tell people about it because it can make a huge difference in, in people's lives where you can live a great life. And that's why it was started by the Reagan administration. So you can have all the things you wanted. You can stay in your house. You don't have to make monthly payments. You can do um, upgrades. You can have peace of mind. That's the most important thing. Seniors want peace of mind. You don't want to say, where am I going to get? I had a stupid tree in my yard. This is all stuff that's happened last month. Hit by lightning, a 100 foot tree. $5,000 to get that tree out. I have to get it out. It's going to fall on my house. I have to. $5,000 here. $5,500 here. $1,600 here. 2500 for my car. 8600 for my furnace. Where do you get the money? Where do you get the money? You see what I'm saying? So if this is something that interests you, you know, I mean, I can answer any questions for you. I want people to be educated. It's very important. This is very important. So, ma'am, yes. <laughs> if you had you were doing this to get long-term care insurance, get insurance. Um, and you weren't in the home for a year. You need okay. If you if you leave the home to go to a nursing home or something for a year, now your spouse can stay, but um, if you leave, you're the only one, and you leave, then. Chances are you'd sell the home anyways because you're not going to come back. So, but you need to be there, you know, I mean, for most of the year. Yeah. Um, or some of the year, not most of the year. Um, I had a friend who had uh, done something similar, maybe with the neighbor or something. But um, she passed away, and the kids couldn't buy the home. They didn't have enough money. Uh, they were considered too young. 
they were not too. They, were, they wanted to do a reverse purchase. You could buy. Okay, so what would happen is if it, if you owe a hundred thousand dollars when you pass on her first one, she's saying that the, the children. She knew somebody who's. Uh, children wanted to buy the house back. Um, you can buy it back for the amount old. Most of them don't because they their own homes, but that's available to you. you Just the most owned. Own. So if the house is five hundred thousand and it's only hundred thousand old, they can own it for hundred thousand. Wow. Yeah, because yeah, cool. whatever's old, they can. Okay. Most don't because they their own home, but it's available to them to do that. And. Uh, they don't have to sell the house unless they want to. I said, go ahead and sell the house because then you'll get more money for it. You know, obviously, you mm -hmm. paint it and put flowers, things like that. Are there any other questions? Yeah, my question. On both of these printouts, it says these materials are not from HUD or FHA mm -hmm. and were not approved mm -hmm. by HUD mm -hmm. or government agency. Mm -hmm. That means I didn't say, okay, uh, what he's talking about is on the, uh, uh, advertisements you're supposed to always put that on any advertisement that that particular flyer did not go through HUD it's not saying anything that HUD doesn't approve but that particular flyer didn't actually it came from one of the biggest lenders in the country that has been vetted by that but the one that I personally have handed you has I have not done that but it is the program is an FHA HUD program, absolutely, and you'll see that if you get all the documents, everything is government forms, government, government, government. How much does a process like this take? How long? I say how long? About a month. Depends on you. Depends on when you set up your counseling. Do you set up the next day or in a month? Do you set up? Do you let the appraiser in next week or in two months? It's, it usually takes about a month and forty-five days. It's not difficult. Um, and again, you don't have to have all this income like you do with the home equity line of credit or credit rating so high. You know, it's the it's much less stringent the the, uh, the verification process. And is the approval rating pretty high? Do most people get approved? Most people get approved um, if they have enough equity and they have the age. If there's enough equity in there. Um, if you have really bad credit, really bad, they will escrow your taxes for you. And if there's enough equity for that, then... But so, like, people. my father-in-law lives in a home that's paid off. He lives in there with the caregivers. We're trying to keep him in his home. Yeah. So that's why I'm here. Yeah. And his home is paid for. His credit rating is, like, 832, you know. So he, we could apply for this on his behalf. Now, he has Alzheimer's. Okay, if, okay, that's a good thing. If someone has Alzheimer's or whatever, you probably have a power of attorney. Yes. Power of attorney can do it. Okay. The power of attorney uh, can, uh, mm -hmm. needs to get the uh, counseling. If it's in a trust, if it can probably stay in the trust. If it's, an, if it's a revocable trust, it can stay in the trust. <laughs> that's important too. But yeah, no, a lot of folks um, have powers of attorney. The power of attorney can sign on behalf of them. Right. So then the money you take out is for the care of the person who stays in the house then? It's it, it go, yes, it's for the, per, it's the power of attorney has power over right. their finances usually, over their medical, all of that. Right. Yeah, it would supplement in our case. Of course, right. of course, right. of course. Yeah. Any other questions? If you have more questions, you can call me at any time. I know it's hard to, to make everything general, you know, but there's specific questions. Please feel free to call me, I'm always available to you. Um, I appreciate you coming out. Please give me an evaluation on this thing. Yay or nay, good or bad. And you find, yeah, please fill out the 